Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I believe this will be the final video of our series, so let's get started. And in this video, as promised, as promised, we will develop the chatbot, rag-based chatbot. And in this chatbot, basically, we'll be able to uh, provide context and get responses uh, for your resume. Like for now, this is my resume here. Once again, finalizing how the environment setup should look like. You will have a requirements.txt file with these requirements. Then you'll have your chatbot.py and then you will have your .env file. And uh, in the previous video, I had shown what variables you need to have here. I will not scroll up or else you'll see my <laughs> credentials. You'll have a data folder here and just these four basic things. Um, obviously, this the chatbot.py is pretty large. We'll go through it line by line. Uh, but it can be broken down and, you know, clean coding practices can be uh, incorporated over here. So that's up to you all as well. Well, this is working and uh, that's what I'm happy about at the moment. So we'll get started. Uh, so basically, first we'll import all the necessary libraries and then uh, we will use the. Where is it? Uh, Python.env library to load our um environment variables and we'll store our environment variables inside these uh these declared variables so all of our api keys will be here and then moving forward we are going to use an embedding model so this embedding model uh basically it's called the uh, sentence transformer model it's by hugging face i believe and what it help basically helps us do is it helps uh generate embeddings for sentences now, why we need to do that, I had explained this in the first video. It's all part and parcel of the process of developing a rag based chatbot. So it's it's it was in the first video of that series. So here you will see a sentence transformer uh, to generate embeddings. Um, now, very quickly, if I give an ex example of why we need to do this, it's like uh, if there's an incoming sentence saying, hi, this is a dog then that sentence has to be converted into numbers because at the end of the day the uh, the llm only understands numbers so generating embeddings basically means generating vectors which basically means generating numbers from that text we have a function here um, it's called the embedding function where you pass in text and then it converts the text to embeddings now here you can see there's some extra code that i had to write because the incoming text, we had to check if it's a list or not. And if it was not a list, we had to convert it into a list. This is all because of the request and response body types of all these different libraries. So I had to do these changes over here for, for me, for able to make this work code work. And then this basically um, embeddings.encode. This is the important function where you have to pass in the text and then it returns the uh, it returns the embeddings. And then here you initialize the qdrint client. So uh, we had gone over this in the second video, qdrint client, and we are passing the qdrint URL and the API key. Awesome. Next, uh, steps to initialize qdrint collection. Now, if I go here, you will see I am in my deployed URL of my qdrint dashboard. So here you can see the dashboard. So you just have to go to your deployed URL slash dashboard and hit enter, and then you'll enter into a screen like this. Here you can see I have no collections present. Even before that, what we need to do is we need to initialize a qdrint collection. That basically means inside the qdrint dashboard, we need to create a collection in which we will store our data. It's just like how in GCP Firebase Firestore, which is a uh, no SQL, you have to create your collection first and then you'll be able to insert data into the collection. Similarly, in MongoDB, you have to create a collection first and then insert data into that collection. So very similarly, that's what we're trying to achieve here. And here we're trying to create a collection if that collection already does not exist. Uh, collection name is document collection. Again, please introduce clean coding. Uh, the collection name should essentially be with capital letters uh, defined over here and just below this. And then uh, that should be used throughout over here, basically. Instead of 
passing it string wise like that um, and then uh, vector size this is another uh, parameter that you need to initialize the curator and collection this code obviously is available in um, in the Qdrint documentation as well. There are some tutorials and all of that. What I did is I went through all of this and made the working code so that you all can check it out. And it's simpler for you all as well. And here we're using a uh, cosine distance formula. Uh, this was also explained in the first video. It's just basically how we are trying to find similar vectors. That's all. And uh, now steps to upload documents to Qdrint. So after you've created the collection, now what we need to do is we need to start uploading our um, documents into Qdrint. Now the way to do that is you need to prepare metadata for each document. What is metadata? It's basically you're providing an identification for that document so that during the retrieval, you can use the identification and retrieve that particular documentation easily. Then we are creating vector representations of the content. Then we are preparing payload with the metadata. Then we are creating something known as point strut for Qdrint, which I will just cover and we'll upload it in batches. Okay, so let's go over what is happening here. Now what we're doing is we're basically uploading our documents to the Qdrint collection. So we have to pass documents, uh, the collection name and in what batch size we need to, we need this to happen. So um, for every item inside the incoming documents, we are iterating over. We are creating, we are like generating a random ID using UUID. Uh, then content, source, page, all of this information is basically metadata. We are preparing metadata for each document chunk. And then um, after that, we are creating vector representations of the content. So now we now what we're doing is we are going into the embedding function that we defined previously here. With the incoming document data, we're converting that data into um, embeddings, basically generating embeddings from that. Yep. So where were we? Yeah, we were here. So we are generating embeddings, generating embeddings, and then uh, we are creating a dictionary with content and value, key value, where the value is the generated embedding for that particular item in the document. And now we are preparing the payload with all of the metadata. Now this contains uh, basically all of the data that we have uh, prepared over here. And then uh, we are proceeding to creating point strut for Qdrint. Now what this basically means is in your Qdrint dashboard, when you create a collection, then that collection will hold uh, embeddings of your data. And now, um, each embedding is basically represented as a point inside the Qdrint. That's how it's, you know, their uh, their way of saying the data inside the collection. It's a point inside a collection. And now we're creating a point. We're creating a point with an ID, with, a, uh, with the vector value and the data payload. And we're pushing all of this data into the collection. And then uh, we're basically preparing the points and then we're add, adding it to the batch and then uh, we are uploading the batch. That's the plan over here. We're using qdrin.upsert. This is another method uh, in which you have to pass collection name and then, you know, you there. there's obviously a rate limits and stuff and then what data you're trying to upload. You upload it in batches. So this is what it is. And here is a fail safe, uh, you know, exception handling case where any remaining points that have not been uploaded will, will get uploaded again. So that's what this is. Now, what now the next function over here you can see is loading documents from folder. So it rate through the files in the specified folder, load and split. So what we're basically doing is uh, the data that's in the PDF, we are loading it and then we are putting it into, um, we're using PyPDF and then recursive character text splitter. And then we are basically splitting the PDF into smaller data. That's what we're doing here. That's all. And then we're creating documents out of this. And now if you realize these documents are the ones that are passed over here. So slowly things are starting to connect. That's awesome. And then here we are de uh, defining class Gemini. And then, um, you know, 
I'm using Gemini LLM here. If you have, if you're ready to spend some money, um, you know, like attach your credit card and all of that for OpenAI API, then you can use uh, chat GPT LLMs as well. You can use any other LLM you want. I had explained this also in the first video and here I'm using Gemini LLM, which basically takes a request and gives a response. Now we need to set up something known as a vector store and retriever. Basically what this does is it, it initializes Qdrint vector store with client collection name and embedding function, and it creates a retriever from the vector store with specified search parameters. So if you search for something, it will literally go inside the Qdrint collection, and then it will see what you have searched for is how similar to what is there inside the Qdrint collection, the similarity, the cosine similarity to be precise. That's what is being searched. And that's what this function basically does. And it returns the retriever. As you can see here, I have mentioned the search. This is uh, like, if this is basically like um, returning the two closest K nearest neighbors of uh, the data. So the closest data is re uh, retrieved. Here we define something in the system prompt. I am telling that I'm te teaching the chatbot that you are a you are an assistant for question answering tasks. Use the following piece of retrieved context to answer the question. Now, uh, again, coming back here, this is helping us get the context. So we have the context, we have the question, we have the answer. I have defined this template and here we are basically getting the response. So retrieve relevant documents using the retriever. So using the retriever, which is this we will go inside the collections and retrieve the relevant documents then prepare content from the retrieved documents and then create a prompt with context and questions and generate a response so here you can see slowly slowly we have been we are proceeding to use all of our functions that we've created help a function that we created above so get relevant documents so if you oops oh it's a, it's a method inside the retriever. So here we're getting the retriever and inside the retriever, there is a method known as get relevant documents in which you have to pass the question. Okay. And then we are preparing content for the retrieved documents. So, um, we are, uh, it's like, this is one of the other, um, helper functions that I had to write to make the code work because of how the request and response body was. And then here we are basically uh, formatting the response template, um, and then we are passing the context and question. Then we are uh, creating an instance of the LLM class, and then we are passing that prompt to generate a response. So this helps us get the response. Now, this is the main method. This is where everything gets executed. First, you initialize Qdrint collection. This was basically uh, creating a Qdrint collection. Then you load documents from the folder. So from the data folder, you load the documents and then you upload these documents into Qdrint. So this is the next function. We had discussed that as well. Then we are setting up the retriever. We had seen this as well. We're setting up the retriever. And then first what we're doing is we're printing the total points in the vector DB. So when you, when the PDF is broken down and uploaded into this particular collection in Qdrint, then what will happen is points get created and I'm just printing those points for us to see, you know, like the size of the data, that's all. And then after that, here is where the chatbot begins working. So here you can enter a question and then we're using the get response and this response, mind you, this response accepts the question and from the retriever, it gets the context and that's how we're achieving the rag based uh, chatbot. So this is basically the entire code for chatbot.py and uh, it's using uh, Qdrint, uh, deployed Qdrint, and then it's using Gemini API that was in video three. And then it's using, uh, yeah, that's what it's using. And now let's test it. Let's actually test it. And now fresh uh, Python chatbot.py, here we run it. And then Let's give it a second and then here it will run and you will see that the collection will get created uh, over here. 
in in the deployed URL. Now uh, there is an alternative to this where you can use a Docker image, and if you don't want a deployed URL, but why would you not want it? It is free. It can be used, and uh, it's like providing the entire console for you. Okay, so the code has run. There are some warnings that we can anyways ignore. Here you can see total points in the vector DB is 14. That's how much data has gone in over here. And now if I just uh, like refresh this, I'll maybe refresh it. You will see that my collection gets created. It's document collection. That's the name I had given to this collection. And here you can see that it's following its sizes 384. It has content and cosine uh, distance. So if I click on it, you will see that all of the metadata that I had created, um, you know, all of it can be seen in each point, individual point inside the uh, vector data. So this is so cool. And this individual point has its own ID. It has its page content and metadata ID is basically this uh, UUID that's generated here. And because of this, the retrieval is so easy and the fetching the context is also very easy because of that. So now let's test it out. So I have uploaded my resume. Uh, what is the data in this PDF? Maybe if I ask it that, let's see what it gives a response. The PDF contains information about a person's education, certifications and work experience. Wow, awesome. And here you can see it also picks up the context. Here is the context for it. And um, tell me about education. The individual holds a master's from Delhouse University pursuing September to January 2024. They also have a bachelor's in, yep, that's me. And uh, what certifications does this user hold? So let's see. Yep, these are the certifications. Uh, so subtle show off, I guess. <laughs> and then one more thing I, I, I want to ask is, who is this user? Because it's my resume, right? I mean, it should tell my name. Come on. Okay, this is Anirudh. So yeah, experienced software engineer. It gives an information about me as well. Thanks a lot, Chad GPT. I mean, uh, Gemini LLM. So this is really cool. We saw what it could do. And here I'm using Gemini 1.5 Flash. Yeah, Gemini 1.5 Flash. So uh, it it is free basically up to certain limit. And then once you ask too many prompts, then it will basically tell that, hey, you're out of balance. Come back tomorrow or something like that. So it's, it's cool. Uh, we have Gemini 1.5 Pro as well. So there are two different models. Do I have the page open up? Okay, yeah, I did have the page open up. So these are the different uh, options over here to choose from. So that's what uh, Gemini provides. It's awesome. It's free. Open AI st has stopped providing the free options as of June of this year. So we can go ahead with Gemini. That's about it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much. Bye.